Hello, hello, welcome back to the channel. <sighs> this guy right here. All right, so it's been laying here since we moved into the property. I have a curiosity. Um, obviously, we were out west, we were way, 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 way dry this summer. And so I'm thinking this thing was like completely bone dry, especially given it's been down for at least a year and a half at that point. So I'm wondering, even with the snow and some of the rain we've gotten recently, if I cut into this, how close is it to being able to be burned? So I do have a uh, moisture tool I've never used. Uh, I could give that a shot, but I also just want to cut into it, take a look, because I am going to be short on firewood. You know, come, you know, end of February, March, I'm going to need more wood. And um, if lodgepole pine is dry, it's perfectly fine. You know, it's pine. Pine's not always the best, doesn't have the highest BTU. Um, but uh, the lodgepole is, is not as sappy as like a ponderosa. You don't want to burn... Uh, bull pine, ponderosa, whichever one you want to call it, because uh, that's got a lot of sap. But the lodgepole is totally fine. Um, not as good as cedar, or um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, tamarack, red cedar, what else do they burn around here? Oh, I'm sorry, not cedar, uh, Douglas fir. Douglas fir and tamarack are like the big ones around here. But uh, nonetheless, we're going we're gonna to cut into that. And first, got to do the chores. Those don't ever go away. Apparently, animals have to eat, so... We're gonna go take care of them and then uh and then get to chopping. Hey girls, what up? Uh, ladies are doing good. Cookies. Hi, what's up? You snuck a little bit behind my back. Yeah, I can see the feed on your beak. You're gonna start eating out of my hand. Look at this nonsense. You're gonna come right up. You're gonna come right up and eat that? Two feet away from me? You're a very trusting bird. Okay, that's enough. Morning, good morning. Hey, hey, you're kind of blah, blah, blah lately, huh? You just bored? I don't know if she's just kind of bored and depressed. <laughs> or she doesn't feel good. You don't have a lot of energy. I'm going to get you some minerals, huh? Yeah, you got lots of energy. What's wrong with your girl here? Oh, you like to scratch it, though. I don't even think you're sad. Stop trying to eat my pants. All right, okay. Hey, what's up, lady? Oh, Ruru. You're not in the right pen, Mr. Ruru. What are you doing? It's jumping up again. Getting up through there. All right. Go ahead, buddy. You need to go. Go in your house. Go. Go with your girls. Go. No, go. Keep going. Go, buddy. Go. Go. Don't get cocky. Clean water. Get on with the day. All right, so in an attempt not to pinch my blade, we're going to cut off the branches at the head, and then we'll just take it back like that. That way it stays elevated. If I start on, that would be the wrong wrong side to start on. Um, so we'll start cutting away and seeing how long it takes till we get dry wood. Well, that's warming up. We've got our fancy hat on. Love this thing.
not terrible. We've got at the bottom side, you got a little bit of moisture here. So definitely not ready to burn. I have to uh, probably another three months. I mean, this is dead. This is bone dry here, and even at the top, it's pretty darn dry. But I think, is that how I cut it? How did I cut it? That way? So that's the top. I'm, it's my fault. So yeah, the top where the moisture is sitting, it is leaching in there a little bit on these smaller chunks. That doesn't look half bad. Top again's got a little bit. Um, I'll do the moisture test here before it's all said and done, but that really doesn't look bad at all. In the center of that's dead dry. So, considering we've had about a month and a half of snow rain, having it elevated here still looking pretty good. <laughs> pop inside for a minute but uh getting this top off was no big deal and actually the rest of this should go super quick um so i'm going to sharpen my saw blade and refill the fluids and then finish this thing off up you came up and you guys were digging in the mud so when when we get them bred finally that far pen will be where we can keep the babies safe from the other pig but right now it's like their dirt pen so they go in there and play. So she's up and eating. Hey, look at your dirty nose. All right. Oh, that poop is pretty soft. Or maybe that's just because it got really wet. It still looks decent. So no diarrhea or anything. You eating some snow? All right, I think today we'll uh, swap out your water too, since it's not freezing. Use this in the winter, just to make sure I've got good fuel. Certainly don't have to. But it was on sale, and I like to keep the saw as clean as possible. All right, well, back at it. Um, this actually feels like it's colder. I need to get my blood going here. It does feel like it's colder than when I was out here 45 minutes ago. So when I'm on these, I, I'm notching them just because I don't know how much tension these are under, how much weight it's holding up. So just in case, I don't want to get my saw blade pinched in here if this thing is, if it's holding weight from this. So that's why I'm doing that funky little notch in here, just to make sure I got enough space to get my blade out if it starts to compress. That actually looks, I mean, it's not ready to burn right now. I mean, you want to let it dry out some, but that's pretty impressive. 
peel all this bark off, give it a month or two, I bet you're going to be all right. I mean, this center core here is completely, I mean, that is ready to rock and roll. It's really just about this inch here because uh, some of this is natural coloring, some of it's moisture. But, um, huh, not too shabby. So if you had to in like a really bad situation, I don't know what, you know, apocalypse, I suppose, um, and you were out of firewood, you could cut this up and you could trim off this outside. Really keep this bottom too. That's, that's plenty fine. You could take this part right here, separate it from the rest, and you could darn near use that right away. So just a thought, if you really were in a pinch for wood, that would work. Go around the woods. You could find um, you could find plenty of elevated down trees. As long as they were probably down for at least a year, you could rock and roll with it. stack it in the shop post the tarp it that way I don't have to put a cover on maybe split them split them in half not go all the way but do that at some point this week split them in half peel the bark off once you split them and then uh, stick them on a pallet in the shop What I wanted to do is take a minute to talk about the saw I'm using. Um, I used to have a steel. Now I've got a husky. I don't care. It's not a statement about husky being better than steel. Um, I hadn't owned a husky before, and the Husqvarna's have a really good reputation. It's pretty much guys are steel guys or Husqvarna guys. I had a landscaper who used to be a logger, and he said 100% Husqvarna. He's got like five of them. Um, then another guy who's like a log cabin rehabilitation, he helped us with some projects on our house. He had like six steel chainsaws. <laughs> so they'll both serve you just fine um, as long as you take care of them. Uh, just to go over this guy, this is the 450 Rancher. Uh, they make a 455 and a 460. And this guy's got a little bit less power, obviously, being the 450. But it has a larger fuel tank and it's uh, a little cheaper and it's a little lighter. So the fact it had a larger fuel tank and it weighs less is helpful for me. Um, right shoulders all jacked, rotator cuff stuff. And I knew that a lot of the stuff I'd be using this on is not accessible by vehicle. So I knew I'd be carrying this in at least initially until I cleared the trees. And so for me, I wanted plenty of power. This is a 20 inch bar on here. Um, at some point, if I get serious about cutting down some of these bigger trees, maybe I'll go, go get a 24 inch. Uh, this this saw is not powerful enough for me to swap a 24 inch on here, uh, especially if I was tackling some dug fur or something like that. I'd just upgrade uh, to another saw, and this would be kind of just my homesteading saw. But for an all arounder, uh, this tree we just finished cutting up, probably 16 inches, 17 inches here towards the base. Um, I could take a 20, 24 inch tree with this. I'd just take me a lot longer. But um, for 90% of homestead stuff, man, this thing is a great saw. Uh, a little higher maintenance, I believe, than the steel, if I'm remembering correctly. But still, if you use proper gasoline, never use 87, in my opinion. I would never use 87, just because I, I want the internals to be firing 100%. So I either put premium in and then do the add the mix, or I just buy the pre-mix stuff if it's on sale. I think that stuff I'm using right now is... Uh, it's on sale for like $3.99 for a quart. Much more expensive than gasoline and pouring the mix in. But you don't use that much in a chainsaw. So it's really not that much of a difference. And uh, I think if I was using some of my older gasoline in the shop, I probably would have bogged down on this project. And with that fuel, no problems whatsoever. So good saw, 450 Rancher. Check it out if you need a saw. Served me well so far.
Well, that's cut. Happy about that. A couple of these actually look pretty darn good, to tell you the truth. Uh, especially these guys in here. They looked real dry. This guy's a little wet. But uh, I think without that bark on, a couple months to dry out, it'll be good. Now I gotta load all this, take it up to the shop. Should be fun. All right. So it's going to need a good month, and maybe even more. Now that I look at it and peel the bark back, the bark has hold, held quite a bit of moisture, but it's superficial, none of it's rot. So uh, it is what it is. Um, good thing is, is I had to get that up. Now my view is way better out to the front of the yard where the driveway is. And um, come spring, I needed to burn that. The, you know, the branches and brambles. So uh, we'll see. We'll test this in February. See how good it is. Now I gotta load up the tractor. All right, animals are taken care of. Getting ready to wrap things up. Got the wooden in the shop. And I gotta run some packages up that just arrived from good old Amazon. Um, but we're parked down here. Now I can get my tractor up, but it takes forever and it does slip and slide even with chains on because that is an ice rink. So that's basically a nightmare to go up. So why even attempt to do it, right? Um, just gonna walk the packages up. And uh, something we deal with here. Uh, this is why I never would go for one of the views around here on a mountain. Beautiful, priceless views. Some amazing homes around here with just amazing, amazing views. But I've got friends who haven't left their house in six days because they have kind of a switchback. And this is it. And if you slide off that road, you're going to tumble 500 feet down a hill. So something you always have to think about when you're buying a house in a mountain state, especially mountain state that gets a lot of snow like we do but um, I'm pretty happy with getting that tree cut up the view is so much better today and um, now we just have to burn that come spring so we'll get going on that I'm gonna go inside make dinner and move on with the evening 